Hello, digital world. It's still Dana Vizpop here, and I'm still in Houston at the University of Houston in the beautiful library here uh, using this beautiful whiteboard. Thank you very much to the University of Houston and the great library staff for letting me use this, uh, this, this facility. Um, I didn't even have a proper student ID or a proper staff ID. I just came into the library and convinced the staff that it's a great idea to let me use the facilities. As far as they know, I'm a terrorist. <laughs> um, anyways, this video is dedicated to Fuzia Alzrani. I hope I pronounced that name. That's a difficult name when looking at it. Fuzia, please let me know if I pronounced your name properly. And maybe you can teach me how to pronounce it, but you'll, you'll need some patience because I'm not that good with names. Um, Fuzia asked about glyph design for flow visualization. In particular, how could we design a glyph to visualize all of these variables? So we have direction, magnitude, temperature, and time, right? And this is non-trivial, I would say. So there are one, two, three, four, five variates. There could easily be six variates if there was a three-dimensional space. We're just going to do two-dimensional today, but the principle of three-dimension is, is the same. And how is this possible? How can we design a glyph for uh, five five variables at the same time. And, and you might remember from class, we went over some glyphs that can encode up to nine variables. So check that out. Check out the slides. Don't forget them. But this is the basic idea. So direction. Direction be, can be encoded using an arrow, right? That's the most naive, the most naive way to encode direction, right? That's an arrow pointing up. The arrow can point in any direction. Um, I need some more practice to draw arrows. It's, it's clear my arrows are not that great, but hopefully you get the idea. That's a set of arrows and they're, 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 they're showing x and y directions. So this has zero x direction and plus one y. This has two components, right? The x component of the vector is here, and then the y component of the vector is here, right? So we're encoding x and y. This one is, again, there's no x. It's 0, x pointing straight down, which is y minus 1. <clears throat> I can actually label them. I could do 0, 1. And this is something like one half and one half. This one is zero minus one. And this one is just minus one and no y. Right? And one thing to note is that all of those arrow glyphs have the same length. Right? So it's just direction being encoded there. Now, what about magnitude? <clears throat> magnitude could be encoded. And this is, this is not the only possibility. It's just one possibility as the length of the arrow. So we could have uh, a very short arrow. And that's a very small magnitude. Or we could, and we can increase the size. Right, that's, that's a bigger magnitude until we get to really a very big one. <clears throat> and this time I'm going to draw a very big arrowhead uh, to make it clear that this is a very big glyph. So this glyph has large magnitude, small magnitude, and large magnitude. And then there are lots of, lots of ones in between. I'm just showing the opposite ends of the spectrum. So that's one possibility. 
What about temperature? So temperature could be encoded into color. So actually, um, I can try the colored markers. I don't know how well it's going to show up. But we could have black, black, black arrow for lowest temperature. And then we could have the blue arrow for a little bit, a temperature that's a little bit warmer. This is supposed to be a green arrow. I don't know how well that shows up. And then this is supposed to be a red arrow. So red could be the hottest temperature, right? So we could encode, we can encode temperature by color. Um, I just chose those four colors because those are the four colors in the marker board set that the, that the library gave me. But you would choose my maybe better colors than that. You would look in, in, in a great book um, like Hall and Ware's Information Visualization book for good things about color. Or you might look at colorbrewer.org for some nice color scales. Now, what about time? That's a tricky one. This is the trickiest part. <clears throat> Now, uh, we, could, we could encode time into, well, one, one possibility is, is the length. We could encode time into the length, make uh, an older glyph longer. But let's do something a little bit more fun. We can add a little bit of curvature to the glyph. Right? Remember streamlines, a curve everywhere, tangent to the vector field? Well, we could make short streamlines. So short streamlines are called streamlets, right? So they're short curves that are everywhere tangent to this to the to the flow. So this is a, you know a streamline. A short streamline or a streamlet is just a short curve. Right? And a streamline starts at a position P naught associated with time naught, and it has a position Pn. But guess what? The time of the encoding is still the same. So actually, a streamline or a streamlet is not the, the, the best choice to encode time because the time step is not varying, right? A streamline is good for steady state flow, an instantaneous picture of the flow, but we have another kind of curve that encodes the temporal aspect of the flow or different time steps. We have multiple curves, but let's just talk about one, and that's the path line. So we can use a path line, but we don't want to use a we might not want to use a full path line, just a pathlet. So a short curve, right? A path line or a pathlet, which is a short curve, right? So we have a start position P naught, right? And it has a starting time of T naught. However, at the end point, there's a start, there's a position at the end of Pn, and the time encoded here is Tn, a different time step, right? So a pathlet or a path line is always tangent to the flow in, an, in the unsteady case, right? So what would that look like here? We could have, for example, a short curve, a short curved arrow, right? And this could encode time, so that's the P naught, but it could encode some time steps. So, for example, T naught, T1, T2, and T3. This could encode four time steps, one, two, three, four. 
And at the other end of the scale, we could have a longer, we could have a longer pathlet. So we could have a pathlet that looks like this, right? And it encodes these time steps, right? In this case, we have T naught, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, T seven, so time step seven. So we have seven time steps encoded in the curvature of this pathlet, right? And that's one possibility. It's not the only possibility. There are lots of possibilities for glyph design to encode time in the curvature of a glyph. Um, some other possibilities could be, time could be mapped to opacity. So for example, older time steps could be more opaque than the, than the newer time steps or the more recent time steps. Um, some people, I've seen many papers that, that encode time, that map time to color. So, for example, old time steps or early time steps are mapped to black while later time steps are mapped to, to red or something like this. So th this is just one possibility. Now, um, to combine all of these things, I would have to ch I would change the curvature, the color, the length, and the direction. Right? I can try to do that on the whiteboard. Try to combine them all. Um, so I'll use um, blue in this case. So blue. Right? And I can use a very big arrowhead. So I have a big magnitude. I have the direction encoded because the curve is always tangent to the flow. Right? And then I have the time encoded. I have the time encoded in the curve. Right, T1 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, T5. And yeah, I have and then I have the magnitude encoded in the size of the arrowhead. So this is a big magnitude. So I think I got everything. I got direction is encoded in the direction of the curve. Magnitude is encoded in the direction of the head. The temperature is encoded in the blue color, and then the time is encoded also in the curvature, the length of the curve in this case. So that's one possibility. It's not the only possibility, but it's one. And yeah, so that's a short introduction to glyph design for flow visualization. And I hope that helps answer the question. And I wish all of the students in the data viz class a wish on, wish Wish them luck with their exam. Uh, thanks for watching. And if there are more questions, it's going to be difficult to answer them before the exam because there's not much time left. Thanks for listening.